guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Neil, aka Woody. This video I'm talking about the ASIC Super Blast 2 and the race that I ran just a few days ago at the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon. Well, it's time to break down the ASICS Super Blast 2s and how they performed for me in the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon. And would I run in them again in a race situation? Well, I'll get to that in a little while, guys. Uh, I've got to say from the outset, mighty impressed with this shoe. I had only done three runs leading into race day, a long run and a couple of easier runs over about 10K. Uh, but I wanted to give the shoe a real hit out in a race format and just at those faster paces. And yeah, the shoe really did impress me. There was a little issue that I did have towards the back end of the race, which I will touch on in a little while. But overall, it was an enjoyable experience running in the ASICS Super Blast 2s. Now, if you remember, I ran the Gold Coast Half Marathon about five weeks ago. Now, that was a goal race for me. Shoes I ran in there were the New Balance RC Elite Version 2s. A little bit of difference here in the shoes, obviously. This is a carbon-plated race shoe. The ASICS Super Blast 2s, more of a daily trainer. It doesn't have a carbon plate. And there's obviously a bit of difference in weight, which I will touch on in a little bit. Actually, I'll touch on the weight now. Let's give these a bit of a weigh. Okay, so the Asics Super Blast 2s come in at 277 grams, which is about 9.75 ounces. And we'll have a look at the New Balance RC Elite version 2s. They came in at 256 grams or just on 9 ounces. So not a great deal in weight variation there, but towards the back end of the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon running in the Super Blast 2s, uh, it did become a bit of an issue. Gold Coast Half Marathon running in the New Balance RC Elite Version 2s. That was probably a nine and a half, 10-ish out of 10 push. Uh, I was out of my feet at the end of that race. 136 and change. I think it was about 136.13. The Sunshine Coast Half Marathon, I did go into that race with no time expectations or anything like that. I reckon I gave that a bit of a push at around about eight and a half out of 10. So wasn't an all out effort like the Gold Coast Half Marathon, but it was still a reasonably decent push. I did hold back a little bit at the start of the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon because there is a headland hilly section that you do have to go over and back. So from about six kilometers on, the paces in the ASICS Super Blast 2s were very consistent and at no stage did I really feel like I was having to force the pace. As you can see here on my splits, guys, pacing was around you know, between 4.31 and 4.39 per kilometre. Had no trouble maintaining that pace. It actually was felt really comfortable. But when I got to about 15 or 16K, I did just start to notice the weight. I won't say it was clunky, but I just felt more aware that I was working through my gait a little bit more. Don't get me wrong, the, the midsole in this shoe is fantastic and it was giving me some really responsive return through my gait. Yeah, just as I hit that sort of 15, 16 kilometers, um, obviously my legs were probably getting a bit tired as well. Just felt like I had to work a little bit harder to maintain that pace. I know there's not a lot of difference between the weight in both shoes, but it was just something that I became a little bit more aware of towards the back end of the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon. There was a little bit of water still lying on the road from rain overnight on race day, uh, but this outsole was fine. I felt steady running through those wet patches. There was no slippage or anything like that. Comfortable shoe to run in at those faster paces. Uh, midsole, I've spoken about, nice energy return. They're nice and comfortable, nice and soft. Under the foot, which is something that I'm really looking for in shoes now, but I'm a little bit older. I guess what you really want to know guys is would I run in the ASICS Super Blast 2s again in a race situation? Yes I would but I certainly wouldn't run in them for an A goal race. 
where you're chasing a time. There are shoes, obviously carbon plated shoes, that would perform much better in a race situation, much lighter, much more energy return from a carbon plate. And for the price as well, like $320 I paid for the Superblast 2s, you can certainly get carbon plated shoes for that price, a little bit cheaper, a little bit more expensive, which are probably going to serve you a little bit better on race day. But having said that, I would have no hesitation in running in the ASIC Superblast for other events like a big old race or uh, a race where you're not specifically going out to run time uh, because it is just a bang on good all-round shoe it's just not what I would consider to be an a goal race shoe but it is definitely a shoe that if you just wanted to have maybe one shoe or two shoes in your rotation that you use in a race uh, on the weekends, I think you could get away with doing it in the Essex Super Blast 2. Yeah, a fantastic shoe, and I had a great time running in it at the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon. Guys, I know that the, a lot of you out there have got the Essex Super Blast 2s. Let me know in the comments down below if you have raced in this shoe, uh, what your thoughts are. Would you race in it again? That's a quick look at the Essex Super Blast 2s and how they performed in the Sunshine Coast Half Marathon for me. Uh, looking forward to putting a lot more miles into this shoe and make sure you do come back and check out my initial thirst thoughts on this shoe now that I am through 50 kilometres. Uh, I will have that up here on the channel really soon. All right, guys, really do appreciate you checking out this video. It means a lot to me. Uh, wherever you are, run well, run safe, be kind to each other, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Take care.